It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Houston Texans and the Baltimore Ravens. And it's coming up next on Madden Football. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to historic Baltimore, Maryland and M&T Bank Stadium. Today we've got a fun little clash in the AFC as it'll be the Houston Texans taking on the Baltimore Ravens. From up top next to Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And folks, we were already excited for this game. And then before the contest, you and I are down on the field outside the white lines. Yes, we were following the rules. We were following the rules. And a ball comes over our direction, but we can't see it. Somebody yells heads up. And instinctively, you turn around and you snare it one-handed with your off left hand. So now we're really ready for football. No gloves either. No gloves. No gloves. Not like what the guys are wearing playing the game now. But wasn't that a whole lot better than that time we were down there? And I got the coffee spilled on me when I got nailed by the punt returner. That happened to the Vikings, right? Yeah, it's a much better job of being heads up this time. Thank you for the, thank you for the notice. Justin Tucker set to boom this one away. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. Leading them out, a two-year starter at Ohio State, and second overall pick in the draft, C.J. Stroud. I tell you what, when he's on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. He'll wind up getting a yard on the game's first play at second down. Here's Stroud. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. That's a good-looking play to me. The big tight end on a crossing route coming underneath. Sometimes he can gain some serious momentum going forward, can he? Yeah, he can indeed, and pretty well executed there. Stroud now on third and two. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Roquan Smith. And he will bring this back. It's a pick six and a Raven touchdown. So a big defensive play there on the opening drive, no less, as they make the interception and bring it back to the score. And I think that's a signal for how this defense wants to play. They want to be disruptive, and you know they're going to take some chances. Well, sometimes it can burn you, but right there, it paid off. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And the Ravens lead at 7-0. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. First down, they'll start out with Singletary. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. 
That run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. Right back to Singletary on second down. And he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain that time, as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. So nothing there that time, and maybe you need to look to the O-line. They weren't able to create any space. No, they weren't, and you know as well as I do, as many offensive line coaches we've ever met, I think that'll be addressed loudly when those guys get to the sideline. Yeah, they're usually loud and big. <laughs> And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. Fourth and short, partner. I mean, this would be a really risky call. Here we are in the first quarter. On They're your own side of the own field. side of the field. But, boy, what a tone setter that would be to go for it and get it, wouldn't it? You're gritty today. I like it. I'm feeling it. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. That'll be a 48-yard punt, one yard on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. A number eight, Lamar Jackson, trotting onto the field at quarterback, ready to lead this Ravens offense. And he remains the league's premier rushing threat and one of the biggest playmakers among quarterbacks. His goal each and every season, continue to expand his game as a passer and become well-rounded. All those highlight reel plays you see, they come off the fact that he can run it, throw it, and scares defenses every time he takes a snap. And he'll be taken down here at about the 23-yard line. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free, and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Jackson able to shake him off. And his throw is going to be incomplete. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Here's Jackson to throw. Texans able to get in there for the sack. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. The defense is always talking about not letting Lamar Jackson get comfortable. A good job there on his opening drive of making him uncomfortable. And you're talking about doing it so early in the game because all week long, there's been anxiety on the defensive side of the ball. How do we keep this guy hemmed in? How do we tackle him to get it done that early? That's got to feel great for them. Fourth down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt. Desmond King deep for Houston. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. The Houston's offense taken over again. They're still in search of an initial first down as they come up here first and 10. And Stroud now to throw. That's for the veteran. It's Robert Woods. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. The time called here because a member of the Texans is in some discomfort. Well, hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, are going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. down with Singletary. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. That felt like a trap, because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carry before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Second and nine. Stroud off the play fake. Rush coming, and he's taken down. The sack there by Roquan Smith. Well, somewhat a 
They're certainly having a big game. And while that sack doesn't quite have the splash of his pick six from earlier, you know he's thrilled to be making big plays during a great individual effort today. They need 18 yards here on third down. A shotgun snap to Stroud. And that is incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. On fourth down, out is the punter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. Taking it about the 16. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. That's to about the 28, second down coming up. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. Second down, eight to go from the 28. First carry now for Justice Hill. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. And that run was memorable for only one reason. There was absolutely no place to run with the football. No gaps, no creases, no gain. They'll come up now third and nine. Jackson. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Kind of a dangerous throw there. He's off balance when he gets rid of it. But this is all about a quarterback knowing what he can get away with. At that time, it turns into a completion and a healthy gain as well. Edwards now on first and ten. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. From the 48-yard line, here's the second down and six. Throwing is Jackson. Taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans 35. And now we're going to get a stoppage as, yeah, that looks like Jackson who's shaken up. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 35-yard line. And he's going to use his legs here. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits... I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Out of the gun, Huntley. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Edwards. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. So they'll get eight out of that completion, and that'll leave them with a third and just a yard. Huntley to throw. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. 
blanketed coverage by Houston. Makes it fourth down. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Tucker's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So they get the three. It was fourth and one, and yeah, I think you were doing what I was doing. I was looking down at the sideline. I'm not sure the offensive unit wanted the three. They wanted to go for it. But when have we ever seen a unit that didn't want to go for it in that situation, That's right? True. Sometimes it's just way more important to have the points on the board than to worry about any type of a gamble. So after the made field goal, 10-0 here early as the kick's away. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. The Texans offense set to regain possession. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Singletary to get the drive started. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offense coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. Right back to Singletary on second down. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs or putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing in the line of scrimmage. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Play action. Here's Stroud. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Schultz. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Here's second and three. On the counter, this is Singletary. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Defensively, he has been a presence in their backfield in the first half. Had a sack earlier, and now he comes up with a big tackle for a loss. Here is third and five. Stroud working out of the gun. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag. That guy could be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for him, too. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. On the handoff, running left, Singletary. He'll take this to the 46. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Second down and eight. Back to throw, here's Stroud. Under pressure and he'll go down. They'll sack him on what ought to be the final play of this first quarter. Multiple defenders in there to bring him down as this quarter comes to an end. 10-0 to score after one on EA Sports. 
Texans football to start quarter two. This offense two for two on third downs on this drive. They're in for a tough test here, though. Third and long. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, this first half has not gone according to plan so far offensively or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big-time spark somewhere, but it's not going to come on this drive as they have to punt this one away. Set to punt, here's Cameron Johnston. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on the lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. The best way to do it, touchdowns. Second and ten. They run once more with Edwards. And he'll get this up over the 25 and the 26. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. to throw Huntley. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack, and it's going to lead him to fourth down. I think you saw the same thing that I did there, partner. Remember, he's their backup quarterback, so the last thing they need is to lose another one right here on the sack. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. Yeah, he looked like he was favoring something in the left leg. Appears to be fine now, but you're right. That O-line, they got to protect him. Jordan Here's Stout Jordan Stout now. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. On the return, it's King. 44-yard punt, return of nine. And the Texans will take over. And the football going back over now to the Houston Texans. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. The loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. They'll give this to Singletary running right. And only a couple for him there as the tackle is made at the 42. And this offense on third down today, they've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and ten. This will be caught by Brown. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Stroud now on first and ten. It's caught inside the 25. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. A very solid gain of 27. But certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away with. And there's a completion right there. Meanwhile, Stroud's throw completed to Mechie. 
And the Texans are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. And this offense has been a little slow to get going, but some signs of life here in this second quarter. They're moving it pretty good, and that helps the cause as well. Good yardage and another first down. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll run here with Pierce. And he's in for the score. Touchdown, Texans. Damian Pierce, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Texans have cut it back within a score. They go I formation. Fullback leads the way for the touchdown. Sort of a lost art, isn't it? It really is, but sometimes when you're able to bring it back and use it against other teams, they're not prepared for it. They haven't seen it in a while, and now you gain an advantage, and we just saw that advantage result in a touchdown. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and that'll cut it to three at 10-7. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. From his end zone, here comes Justice Hill. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Some teams like to start aggressive to begin a drive, but this is still what you expect to see in normal situations. Just call a simple run, get a few yards to begin the series, and set yourself up for something bigger on second down. They stay on the ground. This time it's Hill. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Huntley working from the gun. Looking deep downfield. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Got his target. That's Kohler. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Here's King. It's a 40-yard punt, four yards on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. And now out comes Houston. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Stroud. And that's off the mark, incomplete. Well, they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. 
but incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. They'll run a draw now with Singletary. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. This defense is really fooling around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense going to have to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And the fair catch is made at about the 27-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And they will take over first and 10. And they'll run the option to start the drive. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. Here's a second and nine now from the 29. Here's Huntley. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Sheldon Rankins breaking through to get him to the ground. It's a loss of seven. So, Charles, no turnovers yet for this offense, but those sacks now, they're starting to pile up. And one thing usually leads to another because they've got to figure out how the offensive line and everyone else involved in protection can keep their quarterback upright and allow him a chance to throw the ball downfield. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Had to pass there third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And that will come the offense as they take over. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. In motion left comes Brown. And he'll get it here on the jet sweep. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. All runners count on their eyes to find the gaps and creases to find open space. There was absolutely none on that one. Totally swallowed up on that play. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Stroud to throw it. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. Well, this defense is going to have to finish the job. There's still a second half that they have to play. But so far, an absolute total effort. They've disrupted the passing game, stressed the pocket for the quarterback. They forced him into errant throws. Everything they're doing has been executed well. Stroud on third down now. And this is going to be incomplete. I can assure you, setting up a screen is much more difficult than it appears. It requires excellent timing from everyone on the offense. And the defense's number one goal is to throw that timing off. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. On first and 10, Huntley. That's complete, it's Rashad Bateman. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 15 yards is the pick up there and the drive starting very nicely. First down. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. Throwing on first and 10, Huntley. And a short one there, caught by Likely. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few.
few inches left. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. On a determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. A really nice effort that time. 12 yards on the keeper picking up the first. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 41. Here's Huntley. And his throw is incomplete. Oh, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. The game clock setting at 2.02, so they'll get one play before the two-minute warning. Huntley looks to throw again on second and 10. That's complete. It's Zay Flowers with it. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 19. Looking to throw here, Huntley. This will be caught just inside the 10. And the Ravens are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the 8-yard line. And time to give some credit to the big fellas, the offensive line here, because you've got to have good protection on crossing routes because you've got to give your receiver time to work all the way across the field. That time, be able to scan the field, spot his receiver moving left to right, and make a good, accurate throw. Thank you, guys. Setting up the screen here to Edwards. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. Three yards is the gain that time, second and goal. The key to any screen play is all in the deception. That means everyone on the offensive side of the ball. But someone gave it up because that one wasn't very well concealed. And the defense able to rally to him and hold him for just a short gain. Now Huntley. Multiple defenders getting to him there for a huge loss. So that now four first half sacks. This pass rush has been unrelenting. And partner, you hear that sound of paper being ripped to shreds? That's a game plan that they've had so far because they've got to say to themselves right now, we have to do something differently. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Hundley looks to throw. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. Blanketed coverage by Houston. Makes it fourth down. Great defense there on third and goal. They took away everything. Forced him to fire that one to the sideline where no one could get it. So Jackson will head to the Ravens sideline and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. This one from 35 yards away. Tucker's kick is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. So a nice kick there as they add three to the lead. And from what I've seen so far, Brandon, I think they've been the better of the two teams here in the first half. So even though you want the touchdown, I think that's a nice job there to put three points on the board. set to kick it away. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. 
The Texans with the football here late in this first half with his slim deficit closing in on the end of the first half. We'll see if they can move this at least into field goal range and try to get three out of this drive. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. That's a tough spot for a running back coming out of the backfield because you know he's got to look for the football. Knowing full well, he's got a man coming his way full steam, and he broke that one up. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now Stroud. And his throw is going to be incomplete. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield of man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. This time, they stay on the ground, and he'll be stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. Fourth down, out is the punter, Cameron Johnston, to boot it away. That's pulled in at the 32. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. And the Ravens going to get one more drive here in this first half. And with decent starting field position, there may be only a couple completions away from field goal range. On first and 10, Huntley. And this is incomplete. Oh, it looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. If I'm making excuses, and I am, sometimes the sun can be difficult on a ball like that. That looked like it was going to be right there, but it's in and out of his hands. And a potential big play goes by the wayside. He'll get this to Flowers, left side. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. Now with five seconds left, not really enough time to run another play and then stop it, so on comes the field goal unit. And this is good. It was running kind of gas there at the end, but he winds up getting just enough on it. Well, not too long ago, Charles, that would have been a new NFL record, but instead it's shy of setting the record, which is 66, but still from 65 away, one of the longest kicks in league history. And that puts him in elite company in the NFL. Only a few have ever even attempted that, let alone put it through the post. How about his moment? It came together for him, and he delivered. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we're at halftime here in the Inner Harbor with the hometown Ravens on top. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment, but welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three.
Evans ready to receive it. And they've got the lead as well as we resume play in the second half. And this taken in at the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. The Raven offense set to start this third quarter. And they got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half, or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. And I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. Well, it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Now it's Jackson. Oh, he had a man running free, but he overshot him, and it's incomplete. Looked like they were set up defensively in a zone coverage, but somehow they found a seam because that receiver all alone by rights, that should have been a touchdown, but somehow this ball's overthrown. The Ravens send their punter out now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And taken right at the 35. It's a 40-yard punt, six yards on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Here's the Texans offense now readying for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense him saying, okay, the first half was theirs, but now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for this second half. A shotgun snap to Stroud. A uh, short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. On the bootleg, Stroud. Got him in, it's Brown. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll bring up second down. A gain of five brings up second and five at the Ravens' 36-yard line. A give, Singletary right side. And he tried to bounce it outside, but they'll stop him behind the line. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. I know they'd love to take some heat off of that young quarterback, but so far, not much in the running game, and this won't help things either. A loss on that play. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And Stroud now to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Woods. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, part of their struggles in the first half was their inability to convert consistently on third down. But how about this well-designed play? Gave himself plenty of options and able to get the hook up and keep the drive going. First and ten, it's Pierce. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It was Jadavian Clowney who got upfield for the stop. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Stroud looking to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. 
Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Here's Stroud. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Fairbairn able to put this one through. And the deficit trimmed to six now at 16-10. So three points, maybe not a grand prize at this stage, but it does get them back within one score. It certainly does, because now they stay within shouting distance. So that means everyone on your sideline stays engaged in this game. They know they still have a shot. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. Hill is going to take it out of the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and ten as this new drive starts. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be second down. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want to catch the football first. That one, a first down pickup of eight. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people have to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and ten. And he'll get this up to about the 40. Give him four yards there on the first down keeper. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. Again, Jackson will keep it. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. Here's Jackson to throw. He'll let this go for the end zone. And it's knocked away and incomplete. So one first down on that drive, and that's it. Forced to take the deep shot on third down and couldn't hit it. Now they have to punt this one away. The Ravens send their punter out now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. On the return, it's King. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. And the Texans will take over. Houston set to take over. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it. And he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. From the 25, here's a second and seven. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. 
He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll leave him with a third and two. Throwing now is Stroud. Quick throw on the slant, but that's behind his man and incomplete. You know, they say that real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. You gotta be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there, threw it behind him. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Houston. Signaled for and taken successfully. So a change of possession here on the punt. The Ravens offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Throwing is Jackson. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Denzel Perryman. And they have the football, and will set up shop at the 33-yard line. Before we came up to the booth, last thing he said as we were walking off the field, Want to play mistake-free football? Well, that just went out the window there with a the pick. And do you remember what you said to me when we were walking up to the booth after he said that? You're like, oh, fatal last words. Every time we hear that, things tend to fall apart a little bit, and that's what we saw there. Didn't get enough on that throw, and it turned into an interception. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Throwing to start the drive. Stroud. He throws it on the move, but can't connect as that falls incomplete. But defensively, you're over there trying to catch your breath and try not to show the offense that you're a little bit fatigued. You're right back out there after the turnover. Now they've got to work towards getting another couple of stops and forcing them into at least a long field goal situation. Second and ten, here's Stroud. His throw incomplete. This defense has passed its first two tests by forcing back-to-back incompletions. They know there's probably another throw coming out third down. Let's see if they decide to force the issue by sending people on a blitz. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Stroud. Being chased out left. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. Brandon, you know I'm all about quarterbacks protecting themselves, but I have to admit it. I liked what I just saw there. That rookie wasn't afraid of absorbing a big hit. Now, you don't want to see him taking those shots all game long, but he picked up the first down, kept fighting for yards, and was willing to embrace some contact to keep the play moving. Stroud. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. And partner, to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. A give up the middle to Singletary. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. You don't see that a ton, do you? With a cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. And they'll hustle up to stop him well shy of the first, right around the 15. Five yards, not enough, and it'll be fourth down. Boy, that was certainly well-read defensively, and the key to any screenplay is space to work, and there was none to be found there, and they tackle him for just a short game. 
The kick by Fairbairn is good. And the lead is back down to three here at 16-13. Well, the three points certainly helps, but you feel like, Charles, at this stage of the game, when you force those turnovers, you need to start converting them into touchdowns. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised myself because I thought in this situation they were thinking end zone or bust. Now they got to rely on their defense to get the ball back again for another opportunity to get six points. Fairbair now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. Hill is going to take it out of the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. This defense not fooled one bit on that touch pass. And this has become one of those kind of in vogue plays, you know, kind of like the shuffle pass was a few years ago. This one never got off the ground, but you understand why a lot of teams are running it. These wide receivers, a lot of them, they run like running backs with the ball in their hands. Give him two yards that time, and it's going to leave him with a third and 11 situation. Backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. On third down, Jackson. And that one to the right side and incomplete. The Ravens send their putter out now as he's on here to punt it away. Two-yard punt, six on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and ten. Out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Second and nine from the 44. Singletary, they'll go up the middle. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. On that play, it was the defensive front that won the battle. They outleveraged the offensive line, got into the backfield, and held them to no gain. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first round. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Houston. Three quarters in the books. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. So five yards here, five on the play, and it'll be second down. The 
option right is Jackson. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. He lost four there, and it's third down. To me, that's a superior play by the backer because he was allowed to, I think, run free on it and make that play. His defensive linemen, they covered things down for him because offensive guys, the linemen, what they're trying to do, as you know, is block the guy at the point of attack and then climb to the next level. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Jonathan Grenard drops him for a four-yard loss there, and that brings up fourth down. This is a little hard for me to compute because I'm watching sack after sack happen, but somehow they're still behind in the game. I would expect all of this defensive pressure to translate to them taking a lead, and thus far, it hasn't happened. Time's winding down. They don't want to waste this type of performance from these ace pass rushers. It's a 47-yard punt, return of six. And they will take over first and 10. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. And they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Oh, they'll certainly be on the tab. What's going over that one for sure. Clearly, they were expecting something else out of the defense and couldn't adjust to make that completion happen. So, line of scrimmage still to 39 on second and 10. Singletary here running out of the gun. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Every player I know tends to play the game in his mind before it actually happens. There is no way he thought that at this stage of the game, this would be his first big run like that. Yeah, but it's got to feel for him like the floodgates open a sigh of relief. Now we'll see if things can open up for him. See if it can continue. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and 10 here. They go right back to Singletary. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. The Georgia man, Roquan Smith, came in and got him. This linebacking core, they've done a good job of keeping that running game in check, haven't they? They certainly have, and what they'll also do when this game is over is thank the guys up front, the big defensive line, because they've kept them clean, so to speak, not letting blockers get to them, allowing them to run to the football and keep that running game bottled up. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. 42 yards rushing for him now to this point. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 15-yard line. A good pick up there, 21 yards. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. They'll run out of the gun with Singletary. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Stroud to throw it. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And he takes it inside the 10 to the 8 before he's out of bounds. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that'll bring us to a third and four. Looking to throw. Stroud. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Credit that sack to Travis Jones. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, 
He hasn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense I got it. Yeah. See what I did there? Yeah. He needs better protection, that's for sure. So a big one coming here for Kaimi Fairbear. From the right hash, it's a 38-yard attempt. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. Well, you talk about clutch. That one was right down Broadway, and this game's all even here in the fourth. Yeah, he didn't leave any doubt, did he? Good snap, good hold, dead center. Almost like a big-time golfer in a major, firing at a pin from the fairway, <laughs> trying to win the tournament going down the stretch. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. Hill is going to take it out of the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 26. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And this is going to be intercepted. Derek Stingley picks it. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. Well, we say it often, Charles, but not all interceptions are created equally. And that is a big one here in a tie ball game in the fourth quarter. And Brandon, when games are this close, it usually comes down to the team making the fewest mistakes. And that was one of our mantras back at Tennessee. Coach Major say all the time, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. You've got to cut those down to give yourself an opportunity. Stroud sets up the play action. Got this into the hands of the tight end, Jordan. Second down and six now from the 26. On the handoff, it's Singletary. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. The free safety roaming all the way up to the line of scrimmage to make that stop. How about his ability to trust his eyes and figure out it was not a pass play and go fast towards the line of scrimmage in order to make that tackle? Stroud on third down now. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Fairbairn able to put this one through. And they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. Returning it just as Hill. The return man is Hill. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And they really need to forget about their last time out, the turnover that led to a field goal. So now they try to regroup, trailing in the final quarter. Obviously, they'd love a touchdown, but three would suffice. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Well, this offense hasn't been at their best here. They've made some mistakes. They've been frustrated. They've been largely shut down. But then you look up and say, wait a second, this is a one-score game. So they're still very much in this, and they're on the move here with a first down. 
And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. So that time they got the left guard with a hold. And let's face it, in today's ball, you might have that 330-pound guy you're supposed to clear out of there. You might need a little bit of extra help by grabbing the jersey and trying to ride him out. Call it a gain of 12, but of course not a first down due to the previous penalty. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole <laughs> lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Let's see who's faster. On second down, Jackson. The short one there, caught by Likely. It's a big play there for Baltimore. 41 yards. Well, this is where an offense needs to show what it's made of, and in fact, where a quarterback needs to show what he's made of, trying to engineer a fourth quarter comeback, and he hits a big one right there. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Now it's Jackson. A quick throw there is incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. From the 21, it's second and 10. Jackson into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Desmond King picks it and the Texans are right back in this football game. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. And they run with Edwards off the option. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. On second down, here's Jackson. This will be caught just inside the 10. A gain of eight there on the play. And it'll leave him with third and a full yard to go. They'll try and run for the first with Edwards. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. They only got two, but that was enough as they'll convert to make it first and goal. There are a lot of different formulas to winning football, but one constant over the years, winning on third down. That pickup there was big because they had struggled throughout this one. Jackson. And the Ravens have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. Now, this has definitely been a back-and-forth affair, and now they have the lead here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and they gave up the field goal on that last drive, as we remember, but it felt like their offense told them, don't worry about it, we've got your backs. We'll come back with a touchdown of our own, and they did. Now Tucker to add the PAT. And that will make this a four-point game. So that drive, four plays. And finishing that drive off was the touchdown grab by Isaiah Likely. touchdown taken at the goal line 
And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. The Texans back out there and ready to go. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. First and 10, it's Stroud. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Now Stroud. A couple of quick incompletions and now they're just one more away from getting off the field. They've got options now. Could they dial up a blitz here or just drop everyone into coverage to crowd the throwing lanes? Well, this crowd is making an impact right now. Third and 10. Back to throw. Stroud. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Nice call on defense, rolling out the nickel package for that big third down play, and he did an excellent job locking down coverage and forcing him to try and run for it, and he doesn't get there, which brings up a big fourth down call. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. Will the defense pressure or sit back? Here's fourth and five. Oh, and that's going to sabotage their comeback plans. It is intercepted. Kyle Hamilton picks it, and he'll bring this one back to the 29. The rookie was trying to push it downfield, but the safety bit him. And he'll learn that you have to hold the safety. And you do that with your head movement, your eyes, sometimes your shoulders. Hold the safety so that you can get back to the throw that you really want to make. He got so excited thinking his guy was open that he made it easy for the defensive back to go get the football. They'll start with the option. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. From the 25, here's second and six. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. This now a third and four. Here's Jackson. That's complete to the fullback, Ricard. They got the completion, but they didn't get the first down. So you got to think if you're on the defensive side of the ball, you're pretty happy with what you just accomplished there. Yeah, guy, like you said, got him out of bounds, stopped the clock, kept him short of the marker. And here's a big one now. Try to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Throwing now is Jackson. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Ravens go for it, but come up empty. And this Texans defense stands tall. So Stroud and the Texans down by four. A minute 39 to go. And the fourth down stop gives him a new lifeline, at least for the moment. On first down, they'll start out with Singletary. And he's going to be unable to get upfield as they take him down at the 21-yard line. I know a lot of people won't like the draw called in that situation, but every now and then, that pops big. In this case, it didn't happen. They'll come up now, second and nine. Here's Stroud. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. And go in the books is a seven-yard loss on the sack. And it's third down. Stroud getting his offense.
fits to the line quickly. He'll look to throw. Finding Schultz. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Ah, oh, that's going to change things in a hurry. That shortens the field considerably. And now they're on the move. Well, this offense still has the one timeout here, remember. First and ten. Stroud. Over the middle, he gets it to Collins. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 18 seconds remaining. They come up now on second and two. Now Stroud. That throw right side here going to be incomplete. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his head. Got to totally command and make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. Stroud to throw it. Decision made for them. They've got to go. It's Fort Dale. This for all the marbles. And this is incomplete. So no miracles here on the final play. And this ball game is over. What a ball game this was. What an atmosphere this was. And the home team getting the late touchdown getting the victory, and now everybody in this building can file away with smiles on their faces. And what do real estate people tell us all the time? It's location, location, location. So being at home, that can be a big deal because remember, they were down to their final chance to retake the lead. That home field advantage, I think it